Hello everyone, Adam here, and I thought I'd make a quick helping video about shadows, as I've had a few questions about this recently. And it's just about the, the basic way of doing this, and then the slightly more, um, not advanced, but just a little bit more involved, of using the actual shape of your character to generate that shadow. So let's go through this now. The, so here I've got a character on screen, on a background, and you know, the standard shadow here would be just maybe a little um, ellipse underneath the feet. So how do we do that kind of thing? Well, let's just explain what we're looking at here in the node view. So this is Harmony Premium, where you can see the node view. Uh, but obviously it's also represented in the timeline down here as well. But in the node view, we have a peg and a group for our character. Then we have a peg and a, a drawing for our background, a JPEG that's been imported. Now this, you'll see these, these little kind of like visual uh, helper things to grab and if I click the little blue flower to do a render preview there's my 100% it's shown me um, it's rendered it nicely and you can just see that those helpers disappear so that's uh, nothing to do with kind of the version or something of Harmony that I'm using these are just non-rendering visual things that maybe I'll get to in another video. Now to create the uh, shadow we're going to press Control R or Command R on a Mac um, with my mouse over the node view. Um, it's important to notice that these panels, these sort of areas of like the node view, the camera, when they, uh, the mouse rolls over them, it becomes like a red outline to show it's active. And that's because I've got the cutout preferences setting. Now that will be in another video as well to go more into that. But just so you know, if, if you're not seeing this red outline, that means the window isn't active. So red outline, active, Control R, Command R to bring up and create a shadow. Then I'm just going to press add and close. It's just placed it here. So I'm just going to pull this here in between. Just nudge that across a little bit and hook it up to the composite so it's visible in my display. Then I'm going to, well I'm going to give it a peg so whilst that drawing uh, element is selected I'm going to press Control P or Command P on a Mac and there's my peg. And that's just so I can animate that thing, move it around, because the settings we use for cutout animation, uh, the animation goes on the pegs, and the drawings just control the exposure, i.e. which drawing is being shown. So kind of like holding drawings up to the camera. Now I'm just going to use the ellipse tool, find a color. I'm just going to use this, um, this black one here, and just create a quick ellipse, and then zoom in a touch and fill it in. I just clicked on the outline there with the black selection arrow and deleted it. Now I'm going to click the plus icon as well and change this to a lower alpha. So that was just a double click on there to make it translucent. I'll call this shadow. And the reason why you have to, well, obviously I have to duplicate this anyway, but if I've used this black elsewhere, if I lower the opacity or the alpha on that, um, and it might, wherever else it's used, it's going to affect that color as well. So all the colors are tagged in Toon Boom. But again, that's another video <laughs> to talk about. Um, it's just kind of, you know, useful things as we go over them and come across them in Toon Boom. So let me just lower that a little bit more. And then we can put a bit more of this in it if we want to. Maybe a bit of blue. And that'll do. So um, there's a, a basic shadow. Now, if I wanted to get a little bit fancier with this, um, don't forget as well to extend the exposure. F5, so now, if I'm animating, that exposure is gonna be uh, needed, to, needed to be there so I can actually see the thing whilst I'm moving along this, the shot. Um, and then using the transform tool, I could then animate this. Now my pivot's up here, which is no good, so I'm just gonna click the rotation tool. This will move the pivot permanently for the peg layer. So now it's locked there. So that's an easy shadow to now sort of adjust. Now, say, for example, I want to just quickly test what it looks like. And maybe that's a bit of a hard edge on that shadow there. So I'm just going to add a quick effect. I'm going to, uh, in Harmony 20, you can just press the Enter or Return key. Otherwise, you have to go to your node library down here. But Enter or Return. And I'm going to search for Blur. And I'm going to use box blur. This is generally a faster version of the blur options. Um, you can use lots of other things in there, play around with them if you want to. And then the yellow box on the node brings up the layer properties, which I think is still Shift E. <laughs> I was going to say Shift E, but I wanted to check. 
So yellow box, and then I can uh, adjust the radius. So maybe put this to three. Um, that that's probably all I need to do. And then it will only show in the render because effects tend to show. They tend to not render on the OpenGL, the preview mode, because it uses a lot of computer power. So you want to make sure you kind of test that thing out first. And there we go. We've got a, a very simple shadow with a little blur on it. So that's going to be quite lightweight to work with. It's going to show you it as a hard edge, a, a clean edge when you're animating. And then when you uh, render, it's going to show you this version. Now, maybe we want to do a slightly more complicated shadow. So I'm just going to delete this. And maybe I want to use this character as the shadow itself. Now this is actually not too tricky to do. Um, Toon Boom has some really good uh, nodes, some effects things in there for you to use. So if I'm just going to again press the enter or the return key with my mouse over the active node view and I'm going to bring in uh, a shadow, this one, shadow stylized. I'm going to bring in this one. There's loads of things in there now this cast shadow, um, lighting shading, but they're much more complicated. So again, that's for another video. Um, this one's keeping it relatively simple. Um, so we've got a shadow node. Now this does a lot of work for us. To use whatever's being shown in here, so I'm just going to bring these up to give myself more room. Um, I can just connect this and create another, another port and connection. So I'm just going to give myself a bit more room so you can see this. So this is basically taking this and adding another iteration of it to the composite. Now, right now, this is you know controlled by this peg, so it's directly behind this character, so we're not going to see anything. So we need to somehow give this a peg, but still keep it connected. Now, if you know anything about Toon Boom already, um, pegs connect down into drawings, which then connect down into composites or whatever else, you know, effects modules and things. But there is one magical uh, little... A handy node tool that we can use, a uh, node effect, and it's called apply peg transformation. Now this thing is quite cool because it allows you to put a peg technically underneath another drawing or composite. And the way how it works is you connect, there's an image port here, you connect into that image port. So you see how I've, I've done that there? I'm just going to move this background out of the way. Move this up a touch so we can see what's going on. So I've connected that image. Now it runs through here. Now that's currently doing nothing to this, this visual. You know, it's exactly the same. But if we now connect a peg to here, this one, this port, if we click it, it says transformation. So press Control P. It's going to label it something really long and wordy. So I'm just going to re rename that and call it shadow. And this now, this peg, the image goes through here, it's still processed through this, this shadow, but then the peg on top allows us to adjust it. So I need to set my pivot again because it's over here, so I'm just going to quickly set this up. I'll move it down here, transform tool. Now if I squash this down and shift it down here, I might need to zoom in a touch to just adjust the feet. And you could put a little mask in there as well. And you see how it's intersecting with the, the character. Um, I can push that back with uh, using the Alt key and then up nudges it backwards in set depth. So now it's behind the character. Now it doesn't look much like a shadow right now, but that's because it's an effect. So I need to click the blue flower the render preview. Now that's kind of a cool shadow effect apart from these overlapping pieces. So how do we change this kind of effect where we're getting these layerings on this on this arm and on the body? How do we flatten that off? It's a little bit to do with composites and it gets a little bit into effects and things. And you can see I've moved things down a touch to give us a bit more room here. So I'm just going to move this as well, just so we can clearly see how things are connecting. But what you really need to remember for this is that um, by default, so if I click on this composite, the yellow box, by default, a, a Toon Boom composite is as bitmap, which means it flattens everything. But we've got this set to pass through, which is this slanted side. Now this is a default setting that you can set up, um, you can change the default in Toon Boom. And for cutout animation, you kind of need that because the, you need to be able to move things backwards and forwards and key them in Z space. 
um, you know, how close it is to the camera and so on, which is what we use these for. So most of the time you're going to want these. But in this situation, I actually want one that will flatten it. So I'm going to press enter. I'm going to type in composite and I'm going to use this one, composite brackets combine. And I'm going to hold down alt and click that in there. So I'm clicking and holding down the alt key and then letting go of the click. And then it will snap it into the sort of the tangent here or the wire, as whatever you want to call it. Then I'm going to click the yellow box on this composite because it's giving me those slanted sides, which means it's a pass-through. I'm just going to call it pre-comp. And we're going to change this to seamless bitmap. So this one, now you can see on that I've got render preview already turned on. It looks the same in the OpenGL, but in the render preview, it then takes the image, flattens it, applies it to the peg transformation, which has pushed it uh, backwards. Then I've got the shadow effect. And there we go. And sorry, yeah, not just pushed it backwards, but distorted it. So that's another method. Now there's something else you can use called a quad map, which gives you like more control over these points. But to be honest, this is a pretty simple setup for a nice shadow. And it's gonna give you, uh, you know, a nice professional look to your scene. So have a go. And um, yeah, here's a, here's a good blueprint to work with when you're doing quick shadows in animation.